Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is the uh, market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Tuesday, May 1st, 2013. With a session uh, that was you know, mostly higher on the day, but it was uh, definitely concentrated with uh, strength in the NASDAQ versus the other uh, broad market indices. Broad market really, really lagged for most of the day in the, in the Dow Industrials didn't get green until very late in the session so it was really a Nasdaq led rally we had some a good performance out of Apple which is very heavily weighted but the uh, the overall uh, NQ side of the market was definitely the the better performer today um, internally the market was uh, was okay as far as advanced declines go uh, put on put on a plus 1000 on the New York side and a plus 500 on the Nasdaq side. The one interesting thing was the New York trend will close well above one at 1.24. So uh, while the market is advancing, it's not really doing so with with good market internals. And on the flip side of that, though, there's there's two ways to read that though. The other way to read that though is that while the market is advancing, it's not really getting internally overbought just yet. And we'll take a look at those metrics in a little bit. But let's uh, let's turn our attention right now to the ES futures and see what they have to say. Okay, so here's a look at the ES futures. Uh, just slightly higher on the day, as you can see, we did gain a little bit of ground, but uh, really didn't do didn't do too much. So technically, everything's pretty much the same. The only thing that's really different uh, from the last couple of sessions is that we do have this 13 exhaustion in place. Uh, levels to watch overhead. The key level is going to be 8 at uh, 1625. Uh, down a little bit lower. Uh, it's going to be the 10 EMA that's going to be key support and also the low from the last down day from two days ago. So those are the near-term levels in the uh, in the ES futures. The other one to watch is going to be the risk level or the or the stop loss level for that sell signal in the ES and that's coming in at 1608. And the thing that's going to be uh, important about that level is that that's something that's really just our thing that not a lot of other people have it but the markets do know where these levels are one way or another and they do and they do f find a way to use them so be prepared for that if we do continue up in the next day or two over on the Nasdaq side a little different picture we really expanded the range a little bit better we talked about that relative strength before so now we're definitely uh, starting to push up here a little bit more aggressively we're pushing up near the the uh, plus two waist level at 28.90 and a half um, that's going to be a very important level because that's one of the stronger levels in the Murray math sequence um, so definitely pay attention to that if we get up there. As far as support goes on the downside, plus one eighth level at 28.51 and a half is going to be a minor level. And then we've got the 10 EMA below it, which right now is 28.31. Also note that we are uh, now six bars up on the uh, on the count, and the CCI while we're making new highs here is not critically critically overbought. You can see how it got got critically overbought here at three at plus 3.11. Right, right in this area, and then we had this had to have this drop to the downside. But right now, we do not have that condition present. Okay, internally, I think there's a couple key things here. First is the uh, we did make a new high on the New York side of of, of the cumulative advanced decline line, it's still holding above our trend line, and make and racking out new highs. So we've got a little bit of a buffer before we get back down and, and interact with that. But at the same time, the uh, the Nasdaq side of the market is uh, getting back up into this this broken trend line so now this is going to wind up being resistant so uh, perhaps we're going to see more of a pause day tomorrow in the uh, in the Nasdaq side and if, we, if that does happen then we definitely want to see uh, the slack being picked up by the broad market if everything just kind of sputters out together that's going to be more concerning to the bulls okay when we go into the Fed meeting I always like to take a look at the commodities too because a lot of times the commodities uh, do a little bit better of pricing in what what might be happening on the other side of the Fed announcement. So let's take a look at the OSX versus the oil futures themselves. The OSX is in the red, and as you can see here, we really didn't break down with any authority while the uh, crude futures were really cascading lower. So that implied that we're going to pull back up here in the crude futures. So we were actually looking for this uh, snapback to happen, and, and it did certainly very vigorously. Today we had crude prices to the downside, but the oil services stocks were higher. So we've got yet another divergence. So we can look for the uh, uh, crude futures to find a little bit of a foothold tomorrow. We're not going to have a breakout and look for a breakout in crude until we clear this prior high here in the uh, in the OSX. But if we can do so, 
then we could pivot back higher and see much higher uh, crude prices. And then we can start talking about perhaps $100 oil again. But for now, uh, we're still range bound in OSX uh, with a slight divergence to the upside. And we'll have to see if it builds and leads into anything more meaningful. Here's a look at the NDX versus the uh, the SOX. I'm just going to switch to the daily time frame. While the NDX was strong today, the SOX really didn't add very much and uh, really didn't uh, get any good distance up here uh, to get up and challenge this uh, this trend line that it broke to the downside. So for now, unfortunately, the SOX was was kind of a uh, kind of a little lackluster today. So we're hoping to see a little better performance so we can break that trend line and perhaps really get the uh, the NQ side rolling. Uh, where it can really last and follow through. Here's a look at the NDX versus the S SPX. This is the uh, the weekly time frame. You can see that we are starting to curl back up here. We've just now begun to uh, get back above this breakdown level, but uh, we're starting to see a little better uh, performance out of the NDX. Let me shift down to the daily so you can see a little better detail. But you can see we're starting to curl up here. This downtrend line has now been now been broken. It just needs to follow through to the upside. I'm going to actually add that trend line right now so we can have it on our chart. That's right here. So we've just taken it out now today. So all we have to do is follow through above that and get some uh, relative strength rolling in the uh, in the NDX. Here's a look at the 10-day trend. We had that high intraday, intra end of day reading, I should say, reading in the New York trend. So what we did is we actually really didn't get, uh, get any more overbought here. We actually moved more towards oversold in the New York trend so there's a ton of room before we get to the 0 0.85 overbought threshold in the uh, in the 10 day trend so this continues to imply that there's still gas in the tank for further upside in the market if they can get it done here's a look at the uh, total put call ratio we got up really close to the reversal threshold uh, you know at mid month here and what do we do from that we kind of pivoted back to the upside here because traders got too bearish uh, right now we're moving a little bit Towards the overbought threshold, but we're not really, really, uh, really there yet. So, it, you know, won't, once we get below 0 0.6 or a little bit lower, uh, we'll start getting we'll start getting concerned about being overbought. But we don't have any kind of a climactic reading just yet. All right, here's a look at our SPX TLT cross. Uh, we're still down below the, ch the 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 channel trend line. We've got a very short-term positive bias with uh, traders putting risk back on versus the uh, alternative asset of fixed income. Uh, right now we're still below this trend line here, if you, but it's not on the, on the, on the, on the chart right now. Here, I'll draw, draw it in real quickly. Uh, we're, still below, we're still below this breakdown, just kind of making this, making this wedge right now. So what we'll have to do is just monitor this to see which way we're going to break out of this. If we do break out of this, red, this uh, falling wedge to the upside, hopefully we can put this, uh, this uh, lower band of the, of the uh, threshold back into play and see a better risk on appetite but until we break to the upside we're still in an intermediate downtrend here with risk being taken off the market all right here's the multi-sector daily chart you can see that uh, had this potential double top here in the uh, BTK the biotechs that's the red a lot of those really got hit today they're definitely exhausted they were sort of rolling back into a little bit of relative strength in the uh, in the in the banking index and also a little bit into the stocks and we're starting to see a little bit of a bounce back here in the uh, in the XAU a lot of the gold stocks have very very strong closes today with uh, healthy uh, closes above the VWAP probably some short covering uh, today ahead of the uh, the Fed announcement tomorrow well let's take a look at the uh, individual individual sectors on to rank them from best to worst uh, the XAU had that strong strong finish today. They were the top gun. Computer hardware was also pretty strong. We had a good good performance out of Apple and some of the other other names. The Sox was uh, was reasonably strong today, uh, and you can see that uh, the uh, pharmaceuticals really underperformed today. They got hit very hard. They were the last laggard, and the uh, the BTK, the biotechs were also uh, fairly low on the list as well. So definitely seeing a little bit of rotation here. Um, but let's take a look at the individual individual charts now. Okay, here's a look at the XAU. Um, definitely positive on the day, but it really doesn't move the needle and change too much. We're still kind of lateral here with a uh, pretty flat 10 EMA. We are trying to claw higher here, and we're now six days up in the uh, countdown. So we got another three days before we potentially run, run into trouble. Keep an eye on this little gap here. This gap is about 114 and a quarter. 
if uh, if we do continue higher, that's going to be a, a definite obstacle when we hit that gap window there. Here's a look at the SOX index. SOX index is pushing out a little bit higher here. It closed just above the risk level from this very flat uh, 13 exhaustion. Next uh, near-term level is 445.31. Then above that, it's going to be 453.13 at the plus two waist level on the Murray Math box. And that's going to be a key level on the upside because if, we, if they do take that out, that's going to frame shift this and open it up. To the downside, um, we actually used it today, but there's key support here at the 8 ace level at 437.50. Next support is going to be the uh, rising 10 EMA at 434. Oil services, you know, we're, we're pretty decent today. A little bit of a bounce up here. Uh, keep in mind that this 8 ace level at 250 is going to be very strong resistance uh, when we start to interact with that if the trend continues to the upside. Above that, it's going to be 2 250.391, which is the plus one ace level, and also this reference high here. BKX was kind of pounded higher today after having some uh, pretty decent weakness midday. You can see it did use the eight ace level in combination with the 10 EMA for intraday support. That's coming in just above 56. Uh, we're going to have some pretty good resistance if we get up to the static trend line right here, this green line, at about 57 and a quarter. So be on guard for that if we do push higher tomorrow after the announcement. Here's a look at the BTK. BTK was uh, pretty weak uh, midday. They did kind of circle them back, but there was a fair amount of selling today and some distribution. Keep in mind that we do have a seeker exhaustion in play here uh, from a few days ago. If we do continue higher and kind of shake loose out of this little consolidation, the next big level is going to be 2,000 at the 8 ace level here. And to the downside, near-term support is a 10 10 EMA, which we used today, and then just below that is going to be this 6 ace level at 1875, which was also this prior high right here. As far as pharmaceuticals, definitely saw some uh, some downward activity in the pharmaceuticals. We're uh, 10 days up in the seeker count, and if we get up to uh, 13, we've got some, some decent extension here. If we get up to 13 and get up in this 8 ace level, or even higher, we could have a, the potential for a, a decent little reversal to the downside, at least for the for the near term. So one, that's one I'm gonna, I'm going to be watching carefully the next couple of sessions. Here's a look at the oil chart. We talked about that weakness that we had today. Well, there was some strength in the uh, in the oil services names. We have an inside day here, so if we break out of this either way, that's going to have some extra punch to it. If we break out above. About 95.31 is going to be uh, the first level that you should be watching here. It's going to be this minor level, this 5 ace level on the Murray Math box. And then if for some reason uh, they really spurred it higher, then this uh, static trend line, that the green line here, is going to come into play, which was already used uh, previously here in the very beginning of, uh, of April. To the downside, there's a cluster of support here with the 200 DMA in the 10, just, uh, just right around that $92 level. Here's a look at the gold futures. The gold futures are now eight days up on this bounce. So uh, one more one more decent close to the upside here could uh, give it a give it a place where it's going to stop or take a pause. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. To the downside, near-term support is going to be the 10 EMA, 1446, 1445. All right, folks. Well, tomorrow is uh, is the Fed announcement. You know, it could be kind of a kind of a barbell day where we have a little bit of volume in the morning, then maybe some light volume during the midday and then pick up after the announcement. Uh, so definitely be, be prepared for that. If we don't get much of a reaction right after the announcement and then the, and then the, and then the guidance that's associated with it, just be prepared for uh, a good day still possibly on Thursday because a lot of times it does take uh, until the next session for uh, the real move to reveal itself. So don't be impatient tomorrow. Uh, and uh, if, you don't, if you don't see something that makes sense, a good clean setup, then just pass on it because then we'll probably get a good shot on Thursday. All right, folks. Well, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.